Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You know, this is the time of the year. We're in the middle portion of December and over in the eastern sky, rising just right after sunset, is the huge Orion complex, including the Orion Nebula, the Rosette Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, all kinds of different nebulae in that region. Well, tonight we're going to look at a few of those and how I recorded those using the ED80 telescope uh, right here on my balcony. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I have the ED80 telescope set up on the uh, Celestron AVQX mount here on the top of my balcony. And uh, from that, I can look clearly to the south and to the southwest and almost to the west before I run into the ceiling of my balcony and off to the east, uh, just past the east, just a little uh, notch south of due east, I can pick up the sky there. And the only obstacle I have really in my way is this huge holly tree over here. But anyway, I want to show you uh, the setup that I have over here. Well, first of all, I have the Orion ED80 uh, triplet telescope, and this is a fine telescope. Uh, even though it's a small telescope, it's got lots of power to it. And on top of that, I got my guide scope and guide camera. And then the main camera, the, the uh, astronomy camera, is the ZWO ASI 071 uh, MC Pro camera. And I cool it down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now, in between the camera and the telescope focuser, I do have the Orion reducer, uh, 0.8x reducer. And that takes the field of view from f6 down to f4.8. Eight. So that gives me a much wider field of view. And with that, I'm able to capture the uh, larger size of these nebulae, which do require a wide field of view to capture the beauty that's associated with these nebulae up in the sky. I also have the Pegasus autofocus. And from that, I have a computer right here. This is a Windows 10 Pro computer. And with that, I'm able to remote this entire operation of the rig into my office, which is only right here, uh, but still, uh, uh, it's, it's easier to do that way. And I use Nina, and I'm using the advanced sequencer in Nina. So let's take a look. All right, here I am in Nina, and this is the uh, beta version, and uh, that's with the uh, beta 16 is the latest release on that. And I'm using the uh, ED80T with the AVX mount and the uh, 0.8 reducer. It has all, everything all set within here. And going into the Sky Atlas, I was looking for, and this uh, last night, I was uh, on the Rosette Nebula, and uh, I moved that to the Framing Assistant, and there it was right there. Uh, this is the view that the telescope is going to see with the 8x 0.8x reducer on it, and there you can see the Rosette Nebula. Now, what I was trying to get was this nebulosity up in here and this nebulosity over here. A lot of my previous pictures, I only got the, the actual Rosette right in this area here, and sometimes I didn't even get much of this area here. So with the nebula high in the sky for just about the entire night now, uh, here it is. This is my horizon right here. And that big holly tree, that's right there. And it rises at around, uh, in my vicinity, right around uh, 10 o'clock at night. And it, it, it reaches the uh, meridian at uh, a little after 1 o'clock in the morning. And it goes out of the view uh, at about um, 5, a little after 5, almost 5.30 in the morning. So uh, I have a lot of time to capture this nebula. And going over into the advanced sequencer, I had it set up, and let's go through that real quickly here. And uh, I, well, I call it Pat's setup. Uh, that's what I saved it as, is a uh, template right there. And uh, um, here we have, I have the controls here. Unpark the scope, uh, cool the camera, and take it down to 10 degrees below zero Celsius, run the autofocus, and then skew and center to the target and then start guiding. Those are the uh, instructions. Now the triggers I have going uh, over here, I have, um, of course, do the meridian flip when it's available and when the time does come. I have dither every five exposures, 
Uh, loop conditions, loop while the altitude is above horizon. That's one thing new about this advanced sequencer. Uh, you have several different loop um, uh, options to, to go with. So let's get my mug out of the way. So let me show you some of the uh, instructions that you can give in this advanced sequencer. And uh, with that looping uh, condition right here, uh, I can loop for uh, for you know as many iterations I want. Loop until altitude sets below a certain value. Uh, you can make it degrees. Uh, loop until a certain time. If you want to say loop until three o'clock in the morning, whatever. These looping controls are are, are much better. Wait for altitude. Uh, that will uh, wait until the altitude has been reached for the given coordinates that you have. Uh, wait for a particular time. You can do that. This is for the start. Wait until a, a certain time. Um, wait until the moon. You got all these different options right here. Loop until time is interesting. You can just grab this and put it over into, and it tells you where to put it. Um, the big red uh, area will show up. And like, for example, uh, loop until time. Well, you have the options there of tell, you know, uh, um, sunset, nautical dusk, astronomical dusk, uh, astronomical dawn, nautical dawn, sunrise, or the meridian. So you can set all these uh, uh, loop uh, until all these conditions. So you, again, you have all these different options to, to choose from in, in Nina. And uh, the triggers are really good too. And uh, for example, I have it set to take exposures. There's no time in here at all. It's just, you know, I set my exposure time to 300 seconds. It's a light frame. Uh, I had the binning set at one by one, the gain at 139, and the offset at zero. That's all you have to do because it's going to loop until it reaches that um, uh, criteria where the object falls below my horizon, which in my case, I have it set. So, and uh, to set the horizon is very easy. You can set these very easily. Uh, you go into the um, options and you go into general and right down here on, on astrometry, uh, of course you have your latitude and your longitude and your elevation and then here uh, custom horizon. That's what this is right here and you make a custom horizon text file and it, it, it doesn't have to be like any particular uh, uh, um, ending. Uh, TXT will be just fine. Let me show you that uh, file itself. All right, there's the uh, text file that I made for the horizon. I called it Horizon Balcony. And just opening that up, and it, uh, it, very simple to begin with for me. It, between zero, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90, or 90 degrees, it's all, I can't see it. So the horizon is at the top of the sky. Uh, and then on the other end of the uh, uh, side of the house, from 270 to 380 to 330, again, it's all above, it's at 90 degrees, so you can't see anywhere in the northern sky. And then over here at um, uh, 94 degrees, I have 25 degree elevation, 110 degrees, 30 degree elevation, 150, and so forth and so on. So you just, you know, set your degrees on a compass from around your telescope and make sure you have it set so that you're near your telescope uh, with the same elevation that the telescope is looking at to set your elevation angle. And you just kind of like roughly measure the elevation and then you put those there. No comma, it's just space. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, location and then the space and then the altitude above uh, the ground or above the eye of the telescope. And that's all it is. You just save that as whatever you want to call it as a text file. And then in Nina, you can load it in. And that's it right there. And then the results, um, there it is. So you can see right here, I cannot see anywhere in this portion of the sky or this portion of the sky. But uh, here, uh, it rises right above the trees at about 10 o'clock at night. And it just passes above that holly tree, which is right there. And then as you can see, as it passes the holly tree, it goes away. And then I have a pretty good view of the southern sky um, for the rest of the night. So that's, that's how you do that. All right. So you have all these different triggers and then when you're all done i have it set to warm the camera and then to depart the scope now um, there's a lot of instructions on youtube on how to do the advanced sequencer in nina and chad on astro patriot has a wonderful tutorial on all these different settings in the uh, nina so i'll have the link put up right there at the uh, upper uh, corner of the screen 
you want to learn more about that, uh, check out Chad. Anyway, let's go back into the uh, sequencer. And then once everything's ready, I hit go. And uh, one of the uh, frames that I had, I go into imaging here. And there you can see the image of the Rosette Nebula. This is one sub five minute frame. So with that, let's take a look at that in uh, Photoshop. And I can do that right over here, go into Photoshop. And uh, there is the final picture that I got out of this uh, from the um, Rosette Nebula. I did pick up this uh, nebulosity uh, to the uh, top of the um, Rosette and to the left of the Rosette. I got this nebulosity that, that I had problems getting in the past, but this turned out to be a six hour and 10 minute exposure here. I took the best 85% of the frames. I had about seven and a half hours worth of data, but I ended up using six hours and 10 minutes uh, of the data uh, from that. So uh, here's another picture I took uh, the night before uh, using the same setup, and this was the Horsehead Nebula. And as you can see, um, it came out very well. This is the full picture of the Horsehead Nebula. There's the Flame Nebula there. Yeah, th there you have the Horsehead here. Uh, and this beautiful nebula here, but I wanted to get more of this over here. This was my target goal, was to get this nebulosity, and this is a bonus. I didn't expect to get this as well, but this is a little bit over a six-hour exposure here, and uh, uh, this is the star that's basically generating the radiation that's illuminating most of this nebulosity here. This uh, area of hydrogen gas is being uh, uh, emitting the uh, red color from the uh, excitement from the radiation from this star here. And there you have the, uh, the view. This, again, a six hour exposure. And uh, uh, going back over to here, um, there's the Orion complex there. There's the Rosette Nebula there. Um, the horse head is, is right here. And uh, there's the bright star there, Alnitak. Uh, one of the um, stars, the bright star in the belt of Orion, it's the easternmost star. And there down here you have the Orion Nebula. So, uh, you know, in this complex of Orion, uh, there's so much out there. And there's other nebulas out there as well, uh, or nebulae. And um, uh, you have the next several months to play around in this region and to seek out. Um, speaking of the Orion Nebula, let's take a look at a picture of that that I took. And uh, I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, the Orion Nebula there. Um, what can I say? I mean, <laughs> there you have it. Choosing the filter is very important as well, particularly when the moon is waxing up in the sky, getting brighter and brighter each night. I have on this system here a filter drawer, and on that I do have this filter in here, and it's the Optolong L Enhanced filter. I've been using this filter. Uh, over the last several nights, and I, I, I made a video, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, it's uh, the video about using the different filters and the results of those filters, and they make a world of difference in your astral photography. And while I'm at it, let's do a quick update on Comet Leonard, and Leonard now is beginning to appear in the evening sky, in the west-southwestern sky, and it's just to the lower uh, right of the planet Venus. Venus is shining like a spotlight out there, but Venus now is rapidly moving closer and closer to the horizon. So let's advance this in days. And uh, so the, uh, I'm recording this on the 14th. There's the 15th, the 16th, and 17th. It should be just below Venus. So if you can see Venus, you should be able to see Comet Leonard. And particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, I think it gets even better uh, higher up in the sky. But uh, as you can see, it then goes away and it starts to really fade after this. So uh, after about the end of the month of December, um, you can basically say bye-bye to Comet Leonard. Now, one of the things I'm planning to do is to move this rig a little bit further outward so I can get a little bit more of the west-northwestern sky and a little bit more of the east-northeastern sky. That's going to take a little uh, maneuvering. i got to build a shelf over here off the top of the balcony so this leg can extend outward and I can move this probably another two feet which will uh, help me get past the ceiling here and get a little bit more of the sky. I like the setup up here because it's very easy for us lazy guys to set this up because the, I, I said the office is right there and uh, 
the uh, uh, telescope uh, is a great telescope and being up here on the balcony makes it very very easy now for the other portions of the sky I do have the other two telescopes that I could use and they're out in the garden so um, you know the, there is so much coming up right now in the eastern sky in the uh, middle and the end of December and of course all through January and February you have this huge Orion complex and there's so much beauty up in that portion of the sky so I hope you can get out and enjoy it and remember the heavens are just filled with these wonders majestic wonders and they're all in a sky near you so unless you need rain clear skies everyone